Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss a very interesting encounter happened in the Tata Steel Chess Masters 2024 between Ian Apomniachi vs Alreza Firuja in the 12th round. The game is very interesting because we are going to discuss into the game. So I don't want to waste any further time so let's quickly jump into the video. So Alreza is playing with the white pieces and Nepo is playing with the black pieces. And for your surprise, Alreza starts out the game with 1 knight c3. No e4, no d4, no knight f3, no c4, not even f4, but playing the move knight to c3. And this is a move that has never been played in the classical chess. After knight c3, Nepo was simply shocked. He continued with knight to f6. d4, d5, bishop to f4. And uh, now we have the London session, the Jobawa London by putting the knight to c3. So the game simply transposed. c5. E3, pawn takes, pawn takes, a6. And the idea of a6 is very critical to cover the b5 square. Because usually when you try to develop your knight to c6, uh, white's idea could be to play the move knight to b5, going for the c7 square. Or many times white plays knight f3, bishop b5, and try to play along this diagonal. So it's always a good idea to play a6 to stop the move bishop b5 or knight to b5. Knight to f3, bishop to g4, h3, bishop f3, queen f3, knight to c6. Long castle by white. So Alreza simply went for long castling, a very uh, interesting approach. He wants a decisive battle in this game. He doesn't want to play positional like bishop e2, short castle, or maybe trying to first defend e3 pawn. He simply went long castle, e6, g4, and now his idea is pretty Pretty interesting. He simply want to expand on the king side because as he has castled the queen side, it's actually hard for black to do a long castle because the bishop on f4 is extremely strong and both the bishops are eyeing on the queen side. So it's always a good idea for black to castle the short side or to keep the king in the center. So white's approach is very good to expand on the king side, to attack on the king side. Bishop d6, bishop e3 protecting the pawn, queen to a5. King to b1, and now playing the move knight to b4. Uh, knight to b4, trying to gather pieces onto the queen side. And here we have bishop to c1. If black tries to play a3 in the possession, uh, black will simply go knight c6. And the advantage of playing knight b4, knight c6 here is to provoke white to play the move a3. And now as the a3 move has been played, b5 b4 is going to be extremely strong move because the a3 pawn is already there so it's already a good idea to play knight b4 knight c6 to provoke the move a3 but alreza was clever he played the move bishop c1 rook, rook to c8 and now finally a3 kicking the knight and playing the move g5 kicking the knight as well and now playing the move h4 what's the idea after h4 white's idea is to play the move bishop h3 putting some Highly pressure on the pawn on e6, that could be to play h5, g6, putting more pressure on the pawn on e6. After h4, black played the move queen to b6, which was not a good move, not the best. A better move would have been to play the move b5, trying to simply expand on the queen side, uh, because after knight to a2, because if you try to play something like bishop a3 now, bishop h3, now b4 is extremely strong move, so you must play knight a2, and after b4, I personally feel black is the one in the driver's seat and he can really control the game after knight before knight before pawn takes queen before h5 the game is still very interesting but i think black is still having some chances because black is having the open semi-open b and the c5 but black played queen b6 the idea is to simply go for the d4 pawn as well as black is also threatening to capture the h3 pawn so it looks like practically yes Black is doing pretty good and black is going to be a pawn up. But Alreza was very sharp. He played the move bishop h3. Simply uh, going for his own idea, developing the piece. And here, if bishop into h3, it's a blunder because after knight d5, the b2 is covered up. You can't checkmate. And if you try to capture the knight now, white can simply capture the bishop. And the good thing here is black can't really lo no longer start castle because the f8 square is covered up and now rookie one is going to come up and it's sad to say but the game is already over for black. 
And if you try to move your bishop somewhere like here, the queen is simply hanging. So that's the reason bishop into h3 is simply a blunder. So black simply went for knight into d4, capturing the d4 pawn and also attacking the queen. And after knight into d4, Alreza simply played the move queen to e3, which is a simple idea. His idea is to simply double attack the knight on d4. And uh, once the knight moves here, now simply bishop into e6. A very strong move. If f e6, queen into e6, it's a check, the bishop is hanging. If you try to move the bishop somewhere, now knight into d5. Hitting the queen, hitting the bishop. Rook e1 is coming up, the game is already 1-0. Very strong move. And after bishop into e6, if black tries to trade off the queen, I'm simply having this intermezzo, bishop into d7 check, king d7, and now finally capturing with bishop into e3. Uh, practically speaking, material-wise, it's even possession, but now d5 pawn is going to be down. Black king is weak. White is already having practically better chances. White is a pawn up, going to be a pawn up. More space on the king side. So it's already better for white. So that's exactly what happens if knight c6. So after 25 minutes of thought, Nepo went for the move bishop to e5. And after bishop e5, his idea was, and Alreza simply went for it, Alreza simply played the move f4, which is pretty natural. After f4, we simply attack the bishop. If the bishop moves back, we can simply capture the piece and we are simply a piece up and eventually going to win the game. So after f4, Nepo was, was forced to give an ex exchange sacrifice. That's exactly what his idea was, rook into c3. You can't capture with the pawn because the queen is spinning up the pawn. So taking with queen is the only option and still the bishop is attacked. So first black played the move knight to b4, knight to b5. Hitting the queen, you can't capture the bishop because the bishop is protected by the knight. So here, uh, Alreza simply played the move queen to f3. Protecting the pawn, hitting the bishop. The bishop, bishop is forced to move, so bishop to d4. And now Alreza simply played the move, king to a2. I would say it's a good, it's extremely good move. It is also known as prophylaxis because now king a2 is a move that is going to help you in the, in the advance because the king was simply in the, on the same file as the queen, so it's always a good idea to move the king. And knight into a3, knight into a uh, knight c3 could be some threats in the future. So it's a good idea to play move king a2. g6, simply making a square for the bishop maybe. h5 by Alreza, very sharp move. Knight c5, gathering all his pieces into the attack. Simply bishop f1, again a very good move by Alreza. His idea is to simply capture the knight. And after queen takes, his idea is to simply capture the bishop as well. So knight to e4. After knight e4, his idea here is, Bishop into b5 check, pawn takes, and now the bishop is protected by the queen. So no piece is hanging. And after I g5, we have g6, fg6. If you try to capture with the h pawn, I would say it's already winning for white. You can pause the video and try to find the winning bluff with the white pieces. Okay, if you guys found out the move bishop e3, kudos to you. The theme is deflection. The bishop is protecting the rook. So you play the move bishop b3. If rook into h1, simply bishop into pawn, bishop into bishop. The queen is forced to move. And you can capture the rook and you are simply a rook up. And if after bishop e3, black captures the bishop, we can simply capture the rook and it's still winning. We are exchanger. So that's exactly why black is forced to capture with the f pawn. And here we have rook to e1 by Eldreza. A much better move in this position for white side would have been f5. And the f5 is very interesting because after d into f5, we have queen d3 hitting the bishop and the pawn. The bishop move and we can simply capture the pawn. Checkmate is coming up. Black has no way to escape and it's already game over. So capturing with the e pawn is a bad move. And if you capture with the g pawn, simple g6. And if you try to capture the pawn, Bishop e3, the same idea to attack the bishop, deflect the bishop, capture the rook. So, and if you try to push the pawn, like to h6 or h5, I can simply capture the pawn. 
and I'm having very strong pawn on the g6, the position is already winning for white. So the f5 move would have been extremely strong, but never mind, still rook e1. And after rook e1, Nepo simply made a terrible, terrible blunder by playing the move rook to f8. Rook f8 is idea to simply push the pawn, put more pressure on the pawn on f4. You can pause the video and try to find the winning blow that after this move, Nepo simply resigned the game. Try to pause the video and try to find the best move. Okay, so if you guys find out the move, queen to d3, kudos to you. After queen d3, in only 28 moves, Nepo simply resigned the game. The idea is pretty simple. The bishop is simply double attacked. So black is forced to move the bishop. And once the bishop moves, I'm having again a very strong move, which is rook into e4. And after d into e4, simply queen e7, queen d7, and the game is over. The f8 square is covered by the rook. And if you won't capture the rook, I'm simply a rook up with a completely winning position. So that is why after queen d3 itself, Nepo decided to resign the game. And we have winner, Reza Firuja, simply beat, simply crushed Nepo Miyachi in only 28 moves. So I would say this game was very interesting indeed. Starting out the move, knight c3 simply defeated his opponent psychologically. And eventually in the game, he simply played the London, the Jubaba London, which is a, considered a very solid opening with the white pieces. And he went out for playing an aggressive battle by long castling, expanding on the king side, and um, just fi fi finding some best moves in the position. Like bishop h3, allowing knight e4, finding queen e3, now knight d5 is coming up. So bishop, uh, bishop e5, he took the advantage, played the move f4. We have an exchange sacrifice by Nepo, which could have been interesting, but uh, Alreza played a perfect chess in order to simply beat his opponent, simply crush his opponent in only 28 moves. So yeah, this was a very interesting game indeed. And I hope this game would have helped you to increase your chess knowledge. If it did, then make sure to like the video, share this video with everyone and make sure to subscribe to our channel because many of you guys have not yet sub sub subscribed to our channel. So yeah, so we are going to come up with these exciting videos like this. So till then stay tuned and keep watching One Shot Chess.